we continue with our discussions on uh, financial management unit 2 in this particular uh, video we're going to talk about another way of valuing stocks which is commonly known as relative valuations right now what is relative valuation as the name suggests we will have to value a company or a stock common stock or security using relative valuations of other similar securities in the market right now uh, there are a couple of interesting things that come out of here we have to look at other securities and compare to them try and find what is the value of a company so this will always be relative right so far what we had done was primarily absolute in nature what do we mean by absolute in nature absolute is essentially independent so we were just finding what is the stock price of a particular company we were not really looking at what should be the stock price when you compare it to something else right now we are comparing it to other entities and that's why the first part comes in the second one is similar securities what do we mean by similar so when we say securities are similar they should be similar in nature which is essentially whether you are saying they are stocks or bonds you can't compare uh, a stock to a bond or a bond to a stock right so you have to compare stocks to stocks the underlying company's industry should be same you cannot compare a steel company to an airline company and you cannot compare an airline company to a software company because the underlying dynamics and risk reward perspectives are different for these sectors when you say similar company should be similar in size as well so you have to compare a large company with a large company and a small company with a small company you cannot compare a small company of 10 crore revenue with a large company of 10000 crore revenue because uh, there would be differences in terms of how the market views these companies or what is the risk of these companies in other words you could combine these and say that the companies need to have similar risks that they are taking risks in terms of the business risks in terms of the size risks in terms of the nature of the security that you are looking at all of these need to be similar and then you could apply what is commonly known as relative valuations right now we will not get into too much detail about a variety of relative valuation parameters but we'll focus our attention on one specific way of trying to arrive at the company's price or value right so let's understand it's a technique in which we value an asset based on the valuation of similar assets in the market the key here is find comparable firms right which is what we said similar firms similar in size similar in industry similar in whatever they do basically on the context of risk parameters right then you standardize the data which is essentially saying that you have to use uniform data we'll explain this using examples that when you use uniform data what does that mean right and then if there are any such other differences which are subjective in nature you adjust for them right for example they could be in the same business but one company is export driven while the other company is domestic market driven right so one company sells in india the other company sells outside india right now this could have implications in terms of what uh, what is happening in the global economy so if us slows down or us economy slows down it has an impact on the first company but does not have an impact on the second company right so the risks depending on what is happening in the market 
could be different for different companies and you may want to subjectively adjust for that now in the context of our discussion we are only going to use at this stage the first two right we are not going to use the adjust for differences at this stage that's because under financial management most of the work that we do under relative valuation is going to be fairly simple in nature the objective is purely to arrive at sort of a stock price the objective is not to get detailed into using relative valuation as the only valuation tool some part of this in detail will come when we reach the second stage in some of the subsequent semesters where we're going to study equity valuation separately right so that's that's relative valuation now on a more conceptual level relative valuation is in sync or in line with what we keep doing all the while now we keep comparing stuff that we see, feel is similar that goes on in our brain all the time at the back end right examples we will look at if you're buying a shoe we'll keep comparing whether one shoe is better than the other if we are flying in an aircraft we'll see whether we fly indigo or jet airways now essentially what we are trying to ascertain is if we are paying some some money for uh, for purchasing something where are we getting more value for our money right so it's a concept of relatively speaking which asset or which instrument gives me more value right that's where relative valuation becomes important and it's it's in a sense if if you go to buy a shoe and you know the pricing of a similar shoe in the market then you have a base price to understand saying that okay i should be paying about this much roughly this much for the shoe right that's the same principle that we are extending in terms of our understanding on valuation of stocks right now let's understand the most common and widely used metric under relative valuations globally this is something called as the price to earnings ratio commonly referred to as pe ratio right now how do we find the pe ratio this is nothing but the share price of the company divided by earnings per share of the company right now let's first conceptually understand this and then we will revert the equation to arrive at the share price of the company right what is the share price of the company now whatever whatever every share of the company is trading at is given as the share price how do we find earnings per share right now earnings per share is nothing but also known as eps short form for earnings per share and this is nothing but you take the total net profit of the company final profit which is also known as earnings of the company and you divide it by the number of shares in other words if you're holding one share of the company what is the entitlement of earning that you have because of that one share of the company that is what is called as the earnings per share concept right now that essentially defines what is the profitability that is being shared with each shareholder that that you know holds one share now the company may choose to give this or not give this that's a different issue they may choose to give a dividend they may choose to not give a dividend but technically speaking if you have a company whose net profit is 100 crore rupees 100 crore and you have 20 crore shareholders then for every share that you hold you are entitled to rupees 5 per share correct so if you have earnings per share coming as that now on this earnings per share whatever the share price of the company is that gives you or defines the pe ratio so let's say the share price of the company is 60 rupees and earnings per share is 5 we are talking about a price to earnings ratio of 12 now how does this become important we'll come to that in a moment but as 